Book Two of Paradise Lost, Second Edition. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Paradise Lost, Book Two, by John Milton. The Argument. The consultation begun, Satan debates whether another battle be to be hazarded for the recovery of heaven. Some advise it, others dissuade. A third proposal is preferred, mentioned before by Satan to search the truth of that prophecy or tradition in heaven concerning another world and another kind of creature equal or much inferior to themselves about this time to be created the doubt who shall be sent on this difficult search satan the chief undertakes alone the voyage is honoured and applauded the council thus ended the rest betake them several ways and to several employments as their inclinations lead them to entertain the time till satan return he passes on his journey to hell gates finds them shut and who sat there to guard them by whom at length they are opened and discover to him the great gulf between hell and heaven with what difficulty he passes through directed by chaos the power of that place to the sight of this new world which he sought note who shall be sent was who should be sent in 1669 high on a throne of royal state which far outshone the wealth of ormus and of ind or where the gorgeous east with richest hand showers on her king's barbaric pearl and gold satan exalted sat by merit raised to that bad eminence and from despair thus high uplifted beyond hope aspires beyond thus high insatiate to pursue vain war with heaven and by success untaught his proud imaginations thus displayed powers and dominions deities of heaven for since no deep within her gulf can hold immortal vigour though oppressed and fallen i give not heaven for lost from this descent celestial virtues rising will appear more glorious and more dread than from no fall and trust themselves to fear no second fate me though just right and the fixed laws of heaven did first create your leader next free choice with what besides in council or in fight hath been achieved of merit yet this loss thus far least recovered hath much more established in a safe unenvied throne yielded with full consent the happier state in heaven which follows dignity might draw envy from each inferior but who here will envy whom the highest place exposes foremost to stand against the thunderer's aim your bulwark and condemns to greatest share of endless pain where there is then no good for which to strive no strife can grow up there from faction for none sure will claim in hell precedence none whose portion is so small of present pain that with ambitious mind will covet more with this advantage then to union and firm faith and firm accord more than can be in heaven we now return to claim our just inheritance of old surer to prosper than prosperity could have assured us and by what best way whether of open war or covered guile we now debate who can advise may speak he ceased and next him moloch sceptred king stood up the strongest and the fiercest spirit that fought in heaven now fiercer by despair his trust was with the eternal to be deemed equal in strength and rather than be less cared not to be at all with that care lost went all his fear of god or hell or worse he recked not and these words thereafter spake my sentence is for open war of wiles more unexpert i boast not them let those contrive who need or when they need not now for while they sit contriving shall the rest millions that stand in arms and longing wait the signal to ascend sit lingering here heaven's fugitives 
and for their dwelling place, except this dark, opprobrious den of shame, the prison of his tyranny who reigns by our delay? No, let us rather choose, armed with hell flames and fury, all at once o'er heaven's high powers to force resistless way, turning our tortures into horrid arms against the torturer. When to meet the noise of his almighty engine, he shall hear infernal thunder, and for lightning see black fire and horror shot with equal rage among his angels, and his throne itself mixed with Tartarian sulphur and strange fire, his own invented torments. But perhaps the way seems difficult and steep to scale with upright wing against a higher foe. Let such bethink them, if the sleepy drench of that forgetful lake be numb not still, that in our proper motion we ascend up to our native seat, descent and fall to us is adverse. Who but felt of late when the fierce foe hung on our broken rear insulting and pursued us through the deep, with what compulsion and laborious flight we sunk thus low? The scent is easy then, the vent is feared. Should we again provoke our stronger, some worse way his wrath may find to our destruction. If there be in hell fear to be worse destroyed, what can be worse than to dwell here driven out from bliss, condemned in this abhorred deep to utter woe, where pain of unextinguishable fire must exercise us without hope of end, the vassals of his anger? when the scourge inexorably and the torturing hour calls us to penance. More destroyed than thus, we should be quite abolished and expire. What fear we then? What doubt we to incense his utmost ire, which to the height enraged will either quite consume us and reduce to nothing this essential, happier far than miserable to have eternal being, or if our substance be indeed divine and cannot cease to be, we are at worst on this side nothing, and by proof we feel our power sufficient to disturb his heaven and with perpetual inroads to alarm, though inaccessible, his fatal throne, which if not victory is yet revenge. He ended frowning, and his look denounced desperate revenge and battled dangerous to less than gods. On the other side uprose Belial, in act more graceful and humane. A fairer person lost not heaven. He seemed for dignity composed and high exploit, but all was false and hollow. Though his tongue dropped manna and could make the worse appear the better reason to perplex and dash maturest counsels, for his thoughts were low, to vice industrious, but to nobler deeds timorous and slothful. Yet he pleased the ear, and with persuasive accent thus began. I should be much for open war, O peers, as not behind in hate, if what was urged main reason to persuade immediate war did not dissuade me most, and seem to cast ominous conjecture on the whole success when he, who most excels in fact of arms, in what he counsels and in what excels mistrustful, grounds his courage on despair and utter dissolution as the scope of all his aim after some dire revenge. First, what revenge? The towers of heaven are filled with armed watch that render all excess impregnable. Oft on the bordering deep encamp their legions, or with obscure wing scout far and wide into the realm of night, scorning surprise? Or could we break our way by force, and at our heels all hell should rise with blackest insurrection to confound heaven's purest light? Yet our great enemy, all incorruptible, would on his throne sit unpolluted, and the ethereal mould, incapable of stain, would soon expel her mischief, and purge off the baser fire, victorious. Thus repulsed, our final hope is flat despair, 
We must exasperate the almighty victor To spend all his rage, and that must end us. That must be our cure, to be no more. Sad cure, for who would lose, Though full of pain, this intellectual being, Those thoughts that wander through eternity, To perish rather, swallowed up and lost In the wide womb of uncreated night, Devoid of sense and motion. And, who knows, let this be good, Whether our angry foe can give it, Or will ever, how he can is doubtful, That he never will is sure. Will he, so wise, let loose at once his ire, Belike through impotence or unaware, To give his enemies their wish, And end them in his anger, Whom his anger saves to punish endless? Wherefore cease we then, said Eho, Council War, We are decreed, reserved, and destined to eternal woe. Whatever doing, what can we suffer more, what can we suffer worse? Is this then worst, thus sitting, thus consulting, thus in arms? What when we fled amain, pursued and strook with heaven's afflicting thunder, and besought the deep to shelter us, this hell then seemed a refuge from those wounds, or when we lay chained on the burning lake. That sure was worse. What if the breath that kindled those grim fires, awaked, should blow them into sevenfold rage and plunge us in the flames, or from above should intermitted vengeance arm again his red right hand to plague us, what if all her stores were opened in this firmament of hell should spout her cataracts of fire, impendent horrors, threatening hideous fall one day upon our heads, while we, perhaps designing or exhorting glorious war, caught in a fiery tempest, shall be hurled each on his rock transfixed, the sport and prey of racking whirlwinds, or forever sunk under yon boiling ocean, wrapped in chains, there to converse with everlasting groans, unrespited, unpitied, unreprieved, ages of hopeless end. This would be worse. War, therefore, open or concealed, alike my voice dissuades. For what can force or guile with him? Or who deceive his mind, whose eye views all things at one view? He from heaven's height all these our motions vain sees and derides, not more almighty to resist our might than wise to frustrate all our plots and wiles. Shall we then live thus vile, the race of heaven thus trampled, thus expelled, to suffer here chains and these torments? Better these than worse, by my advice, since fate inevitable subdues us and omnipotent decree the victor's will, to suffer as to do our strength is evil. Nor the law unjust that so ordains. This was at first resolved, if we were wise, against so great a foe contending, and so doubtful what might fall. I laugh when those who at the spear are bold and venturous, if that fail them, shrink and fear what yet they know must follow to endure exile or ignominy or bonds or pain the sentence of their conqueror. This is now our doom, which if we can sustain and bear, our supreme foe in time may much remit his anger, and perhaps thus far removed, not mind us, not offending, satisfied with what is punished whence these raging fires will slacken, if his breath stir not their flames, our purer essence then will overcome their noxious vapour, or inured not feel, or changed at length, and to the place conformed in temper and in nature, will receive familiar the fierce heat, and void of pain. This horror will grow mild, this darkness light, Besides, what hope the never-ending flight of future days may bring, what chance, what change worth waiting, since our present lot appears for happy though but ill, for ill not worst, if we procure not to ourselves more woe. 
Thus Belial with words clothed in reason's garb, Counseled ignoble ease and peaceful sloth, not peace. And after him thus Mammon spake. Either to disenthrone the king of heaven we war, if war be best, Or to regain our own right lost. Him to unthrone we then may hope when everlasting fate shall yield to fickle chance and chaos judge the strife. The former vain to hope argues as vain the latter. For what place can be for us within heaven's bound unless heaven's lord supreme we overpower? Suppose he should relent and publish grace to all on promise made of new subjection. With what eyes could we stand in his presence humble and receive strict laws imposed to celebrate his throne with warbled hymns and to his godhead sing forced hallelujahs while he lordly sits our envied sovereign and his altar breathes ambrosial odors and ambrosial flowers our servile offerings. This must be our task in heaven this our delight how wearisome eternity so spent in worship paid to whom we hate let us not then pursue by force impossible by leave obtained unacceptable though in heaven our state of splendid vassalage but rather seek our own good from ourselves and from our own live to ourselves though in this vast recess free and do not accountable, preferring hard liberty before the easy yoke of servile pomp. Our greatness will appear then most conspicuous, when great things of small, useful of hurtful, prosperous of adverse we can create, and in what place soe'er thrive under evil and work ease out of pain through labor and endurance. This deep world of darkness do we dread? How oft, amidst thick clouds and dark, doth heaven's all-ruling sire choose to reside, his glory unobscured, and with the majesty of darkness round covers his throne, from whence deep thunders roar, mustering their rage, and heaven resembles hell. As he our darkness, cannot we his light imitate when we please? This desert soil wants not her hidden lustre, gems and gold, nor want we skill or art from whence to raise magnificence, and what can heaven show more? Our torments also may in length of time become our elements. These piercing fires as soft as now severe, our temper changed into their temper, which must needs remove the sensible of pain. All things invite to peaceful counsels, and the settled state of order, how in safety best we may compose our present evils with regard of what we are and where, dismissing quite all thoughts of war. Ye have what I advise. He scarce had finished when such murmur filled the assembly as when hollow rocks retain the sound of blustering winds, which all night long had roused the sea, now with hoarse cadence lulls seafaring men or watch whose bark by chance or pinnace anchors in a craggy bay after the tempest such applause was heard as mammon ended and his sentence pleased advising peace for such another field they dreaded worse than hell so much the fear of thunder and the sword of michael wrought still within them and no less desire to found this nether empire which might rise by policy and long process of time in emulation opposite to heaven which when beelzebub perceived than whom satan except none higher sat with grave aspect he rose and in his rising seemed a pillar of state deep on his front engraven deliberation sat and public care and princely counsel in his face yet shone majestic though in ruin sage he stood with atlantean shoulders fit to bear the weight of mightiest monarchies his look drew audience and attention still as night or summer's noontide air while thus he spake thrones and imperial powers 
offspring of heaven, ethereal virtues, or these titles now must we renounce, and changing style be called princes of a hell. For so the popular vote inclines, here to continue and build up here a growing empire, doubtless, while we dream, and know not that the king of heaven hath doomed this place our dungeon, not our safe retreat beyond his potent arm, to live exempt from heaven's high jurisdiction, in new league banded against his throne, but to remain in strictest bondage, though thus far removed, under the inevitable curb, reserved his captive multitude, for he, be sure, in height or depth, still first and last will reign sole king, and of his kingdom lose no part by our revolt, but over hell extend his empire, and with iron scepter rule us here as with his golden those in heaven. What sit we then projecting peace and war? War hath determined us, and foiled with loss irreparable. Terms of peace yet none vouchsafed or sought. For what peace will be given to us, enslaved, but custody severe, and stripes and arbitrary punishment inflicted? And what peace can we return but to our power, hostility and hate, untamed reluctance and revenge, though slow yet ever plotting how the conqueror least may reap his conquest, and may least rejoice in doing what we most in suffering feel? Nor will occasion want, nor shall we need with dangerous expedition to invade heaven, whose high walls fear no assault or siege, or ambush from the deep? What if we find some easier enterprise? There is a place, if ancient and prophetic fame in heaven or not, another world, the happy seat of some new race called man, about this time to be created, like to us, though less in power and excellence, but favoured more of him who rules above. So was his will pronounced among the gods, and by an oath that shook heaven's whole circumference confirmed. Thither let us bend all our thoughts to learn what creatures there inhabit, of what mould or substance, how endued, and what their power, and where their weakness, how attempted best by force or subtlety. Though heaven be shut, and heaven's high arbitrator sit secure in his own strength, this place may lie exposed, the utmost border of his kingdom left to their defense who hold it. Here, perhaps, some advantageous act may be achieved by sudden onset, either with hell fire to waste his whole creation, or possess all as our own, and drive, as we were driven, the puny habitants, or if not drive, seduce them to our party, that their god may prove their foe, and with repenting hand abolish his own works. This would surpass common revenge, and interrupt his joy in our confusion, and our joy upraise in his disturbance when his darling sons, hurled headlong to partake with us, shall curse their frail originals and faded bliss, faded so soon. Advise, if this be worth attempting, or to sit in darkness here hatching vain empires. Thus Beelzebub pleaded his devilish counsel, first devised by Satan and in part proposed. For whence but from the author of all ill could spring so deep a malice, To confound the race of mankind in one root, And earth with hell to mingle and involve, Done all to spite the great Creator. But their spite still serves his glory to augment. The bold design pleased highly those infernal states, And joy sparkled in all their eyes, With full assent they vote, Whereat his speech he thus renews. Well have ye judged, well ended long debate, Synod of Gods, 
And like to what ye are, great things resolv'd, Which from the lowest deep will once more lift us up, In spite of fate, nearer our ancient seat, Perhaps in view of those bright confines, Whence with neighbouring arms and opportune excursion We may chance re-enter Heaven, or else in some mild zone Dwell not unvisited of Heaven's fair light, secure, And at the brightening orient beam purge off this gloom, The soft delicious air to heal the scar of these corrosive fires Shall breathe her balm. But first, whom shall we send in search of this new world? Whom shall we find sufficient? Who shall tempt with wandering feet The dark, unbottomed, infinite abyss, And through the palpable obscure Find out his uncouth way, Or spread his airy flight, Upborne with indefatigable wings Over the vast abrupt, Ere he arrive the happy isle? What strength! What art can then suffice, or what evasion bear him safe through the strict centuries and stations thick of angels watching round? Here he had need all circumspection, and we now no less choice in our suffrage, for on whom we send the weight of all, and our last hope relies. This said, he sat, and expectation held his look suspense awaiting who appeared to second or oppose or undertake the perilous attempt but all sat mute pondering the danger with deep thoughts and each in others countenance read his own dismay astonished none among the choice and prime of those heaven warring champions could be found so hardy as to proffer or accept alone the dreadful voyage till at last satan whom now transcendent glory raised above his fellows with monarchal pride conscious of highest worth unmoved thus spake o progeny of heaven imperial thrones with reason hath deep silence and demur seized us though undismayed Long is the way and hard that out of hell leads up to light. A prison strong, this huge convex of fire, outrageous to devour, immures us round ninefold, and gates of burning adamant barred over us prohibit all egress. These pass, if any pass. The void profound of unessential night receives him next wide gaping, and with utter loss of being threatens him, plunged in that abortive gulf. If thence he scape into whatever world or unknown region, what remains him less than unknown dangers, and his hard escape? But I should ill become this throne, O peers, and this imperial sovereignty, adorned with splendor, armed with power, if aught proposed and judged of public moment in the shape of difficulty or danger could deter me from attempting wherefore do i assume these royalties and not refuse to reign refusing to accept as great a share of hazard as of honour due alike to him who reigns and so much to him due of hazard more as he above the rest high honoured sits Go, therefore, mighty powers, terror of heaven, though fall, intend at home, while here shall be our home, what best may ease the present misery, and render hell more tolerable. If there be cure or charm to respite or deceive or slack the pain of this ill mansion, intermit no watch against a wakeful foe, while I abroad through all the coasts of dark destruction, seek deliverance for us all. This enterprise none shall partake with me. Thus saying rose the monarch, and prevented all reply, prudent, lest from his resolution raised others among the chief might offer now, certain to be refused, what erst they feared 
and so refused might in opinion stand his rivals winning cheap the high repute which he through hazard huge must earn but they dreaded not more that venture than his voice forbidding and at once with him they rose the rising all at once was as the sound of thunder heard remote towards him they bend with awful reverence prone and as a god extolled him equal to the highest in heaven nor failed they to express how much they praised that for the general safety he despised his own for neither do the spirits damned lose all their virtue lest bad men should boast the specious deeds on earth which glory excites or close ambition varnished or with zeal thus they their doubtful consultations dark ended rejoicing in their matchless chief as when from mountain tops the dusky clouds ascending while the north wind sleeps or spread heaven's cheerful face the lowering elements cowls or the darkened landscape snow or shower if chance the radiant sun with farewell sweet extend his evening beam the fields revive the birds the notes renew and bleating herds attest the joy that hill and valley rings oh shame to men devil with devil damned firm concord holds men only disagree of creatures rational though under hope of heavenly grace and god proclaiming peace yet live in hatred enmity and strife among themselves and levy cruel wars wasting the earth each other to destroy as if which might induce us to accord men had not hellish foes enow besides that day and night for his destruction wait the stygian council thus dissolved and forth in order came the grand infernal peers midst came the mighty paramount and seemed alone the antagonist of heaven nor less than hell's dread emperor with pomp supreme and godlike imitated state him round a globe of fiery seraphim enclosed with bright emblazonry and horrent arms then of their session ended they bid cry with trumpets regal sound the great result toward the four winds four speedy cherubim put to their mouths the sounding alchemy by harold's voice explained the hollow abyss heard far and wide and all the host of hell with deafening shout returned them loud acclaim thence more at ease their minds and somewhat raised by false presumptuous hope the ranged powers disband and wandering each his several way pursues as inclination or sad choice leads him perplexed where he may likeliest find truth to his restless thoughts and entertain the irksome hours till his great chief return part on the plain or in the air sublime upon the wing or in swift race contend as at the olympian games or pythian fields part curb their fiery steeds or shun the goal with rapid wheels or fronted brigades form as when to warn proud cities war appears waged in the troubled sky and armies rush to battle in the clouds before each van prick forth the airy knights and couch their spears till thickest legions close with feats of arms from either end of heaven the welkin burn others with vast typhian rage more fell rend up both rocks and hills and ride the air in whirlwind hell scarce holds the wild uproar as when alcides from oealia crowned with conquest felt the venomed robe and tore through pain up by the roots the salian pines and like us from the top of eta threw into the oboic sea others more mild retreated in a silent valley sing with notes angelical to many a harp their own heroic deeds and hapless fall by doom of battle and complain that fate free virtue should enthrall to force or chance the song was partial but the harmony what could it less when spirits immortal sing suspended hell and took with ravishment the thronging audience in discourse more sweet eloquence the soul song charms the sense others apart sat on a hill retired in thoughts more elevate and reasoned high 
of providence, foreknowledge, will, and fate. Fixed fate, free will, foreknowledge absolute, and found no end in wandering mazes lost. Of good and evil much they argued then, of happiness and final misery, passion and apathy, and glory and shame, vain wisdom all and false philosophy. Yet with a pleasing sorcery could charm pain for a while or anguish, and excite fallacious hope, or arm the durid breast with stubborn patience as with triple steel. Another part, in squadrons and gross bands, on bold adventure to discover wide that dismal world, if any climb perhaps might yield them easier habitation, bend four ways their flying march along the banks of four infernal rivers that disgorge into the burning lake their baleful streams. Of horrid sticks the flood of deadly hate, sad Acheron of sorrow, black and deep. Cositus, named of lamentation, loud heard on the rueful stream. Fierce Phlegaton, whose waves of torrent fire inflame with rage. Far off from these, a slow and silent stream, Lethe, the river of oblivion, rolls a watery labyrinth. Whereof who drinks, forthwith his former state and being forgets, forgets both joy and grief, pleasure and pain. Beyond this flood, a frozen continent lies dark and wild, beat with perpetual storms of whirlwind and dire hail, which on firm land thaws not but gathers heap, and ruin seems of ancient pile. All else, deep snow and ice, a gulf profound as that Serbonian bog betwixt Damiata and Mount Cassius old, where armies whole have sunk. The parching air burns froar, and cold performs the effect of fire. Thither, by harpy-footed furies hailed, at certain revolutions all the damned are brought, and feel by turns the bitter change of fierce extremes, extremes by change more fierce, from beds of raging fire to starve in ice their soft ethereal warmth and there to pine, immovable, in fixed and frozen round periods of time, thence hurried back to fire. They ferry over this Lethean sound both to and fro, their sorrow to augment, and wish and struggle as they pass to reach the tempting stream, with one small drop to lose in sweet forgetfulness all pain and woe, all in one moment, and so near the brink but fate withstands, and to oppose the tempt, Medusa with Gorgonian terror guards the ford, and of itself the water flies all taste of living white as once it fled the lip of Tantalus. Thus, roving on in confused march forlorn, the adventurous bands with shuddering horror pale and eyes aghast, viewed first their lamentable lot and found no rest. Through many a dark and dreary vale they passed, and many a region dolorous, or many a frozen, many a fiery alp, rocks, caves, lakes, fens, bogs, dens, and shades of death, a universe of death, which God by curse created evil, for evil only good, where all life dies, death lives, and nature breeds perverse, all monstrous, all prodigious things, abominable, unutterable, and worse than fables yet of feigned or fear conceived, gorgons and hydras and chimeras dire. Meanwhile, the adversary of God and man, Satan, with thoughts inflamed of highest design, puts on swift wings, and toward the gates of hell explores his solitary flight. Sometimes he scours the right-hand coast, sometimes the left, now shaves with level wing the deep, then soars up to the fiery concave towering high. As when far off at sea a fleet descried hangs in the clouds, 
by equinoctial winds close sailing from Bengala, or the isles of Turnet and Dor, whence merchants bring their spicy drugs. They, on the trading flood, through the wide Ethiopian to the Cape, ply stemming nightly toward the pole. So seemed far off the flying fiend. At last a pier held bounds, high-reaching to the horrid roof, and thrice threefold the gates. Three folds were brass, three iron, three of adamantine rock, impenetrable, impaled with circling fire, yet unconsumed. Before the gates there sat, on either side, a formidable shape. The one seemed woman to the waist, and fair, but ended foul in many a scaly fold, voluminous and vast, a serpent armed with mortal sting. About her middle round a cry of hellhounds, never ceasing, bark, with wide Cerberian mouths full loud, and rung a hideous peal, yet, when they list, would creep, if aught disturbed the noise, into her womb, and kennel there, yet there still barked and howled within unseen. Far less abhorred than these vexed Scylla, bathing in the sea that parts Calabria from the horse Trinacrian shore, nor uglier follow the night hag, when called in secret riding through the air she comes lured with the smell of infant blood to dance with lapland witches while the labouring moon eclipses at their charms the other shape if shape it might be called that shape had none distinguishable in member joint or limb or substance might be called that shadow seemed for each seemed either black it stood as night fierce as ten furies terrible as hell and shook a dreadful dart what seemed his head the likeness of a kingly crown had on satan was now at hand and from his seat the monster moving onward came as fast with horrid strides hell trembled as he strode the undaunted fiend what this might be admired admired not feared god and his son except created thing not valued he nor shunned and with disdainful look thus first began whence and what art thou execrable shape that dares though grim and terrible advance thy miscreated front athwart my way to yonder gates through them i mean to pass that be assured without leave asked of thee retire or taste thy folly and learn by proof hell-born not to contend with spirits of heaven to whom the goblin, full of wrath, replied, Art thou that traitor angel? Art thou he who first broke peace in heaven, And faith till then unbroken, And in proud rebellious arms Drew after him the third part of heaven's sons, Conjured against the highest? For which both thou and they, outcast from God, Are here condemned to waste eternal days In woe and pain? And reckonst thou thyself with spirits of heaven, hell doomed, and breathes defiance here and scorn, where I reign king, and to enrage thee more, thy king and lord, back to thy punishment, false fugitive, and to thy speed add wings, lest with the whip of scorpions I pursue thy lingering, and with one stroke of this dart strange horror seize thee and pangs unfelt before so spake the grisly terror and in shape so speaking and so threatening grew tenfold more dreadful and deformed on the other side incensed with indignation satan stood unterrified and like a comet burned that fires the length of ophiuchus huge and thartic sky and from his horrid hair shakes pestilence and war each at the head levelled his deadly aim their fatal hands no second stroke intend and such a frown each cast at the other as when two black clouds with heaven's artillery fraught come rattling on over the caspian then stand front to front hovering a space till winds the signal blow to join the dark encounter in mid-air so frowned the mighty combatants that hell grew darker at their frown so mad they stood 
for never but once more was either like to meet so great a foe and now great deeds had been achieved whereof all hell had rung had not the snaky sorceress that sat fast by hell gate and kept the fatal key risen and with hideous outcry rushed between oh father what intends thy hand she cried against thy only son what fury o son possesses thee to bend that mortal dart against thy father's head and knowst for whom for him who sits above and laughs the while at thee ordained his drudge to execute what e'er his wrath which he calls justice bids his wrath which one day will destroy ye both she spake and at her words the hellish pest forbore then these to her satan returned so strange thy outcry and thy words so strange thou interposest that my sudden hand prevented spares to tell thee yet by deeds what it intends till first i know of thee what thing thou art thus double formed and why in this infernal veil first met thou callst me father and that phantasm calls my son i know thee not nor ever saw till now sight more detestable than him and thee to whom the portress of hellgate replied hast thou forgot me then and do i seem now in thine eyes so foul once deemed so fair in heaven when at the assembly and in sight of all the seraphim with thee combined in bold conspiracy against heaven's king all on a sudden miserable pain surprised thee dim thine eyes and dizzy swum in darkness while thy head flames thick and fast threw forth till on the left side opening wide likest to thee in shape and countenance bright then shining heavenly fair a goddess armed out of thy head i sprung amazement seized all the host of heaven back they recoiled afraid at first and called me sin and for a sign portentous held me but familiar grown i pleased and with attractive graces won the most diverse thee chiefly who full oft thyself in me thy perfect image viewing becamest enamoured and such joy thou took'st with me in secret that my womb conceived a growing burden meanwhile war arose and fields were fought in heaven wherein remained for what could else to our almighty foe clear victory to our part loss and rout through all the empyrean down they fell driven headlong from the pitch of heaven down into this deep and in the general fall i also at which time this powerful key into my hand was given with charge to keep these gates forever shut which none can pass without my opening pensive here i sat alone but long i sat not till my womb pregnant by thee and now excessive grown prodigious motion felt and rueful throes at last this odious offspring whom thou seest thine own begotten breaking violent way tore through my entrails that with fear and pain distorted all my nether shape thus grew transformed but he my inbred enemy forth issued brandishing his fatal dart made to destroy i fled and cried out death hell trembled at the hideous name and sighed from all her caves and back resounded death i fled but he pursued though more it seems inflamed with lust than rage and swifter far me overtook his mother all dismayed and in embraces forcible and foul engendering with me of that rape begot these yelling monsters that with ceaseless cry surround me as thou sawest hourly conceived and hourly born with sorrow infinite to me for when they list into the womb that bred them they return and howl and gnaw my bowels the repast then bursting forth afresh with conscious terrors vex me round 
that rest or intermission none I find. Before mine eyes in opposition sits grim death, my son and foe, who sets them on, and me, his parent, would full soon devour for want of other prey, but that he knows his end with mine involved, and knows that I should prove a bitter morsel and his bane, whenever that shall be, so fate pronounced. But thou, O oh father, I forewarn thee, shun his deadly arrow, neither vainly hope to be invulnerable in those bright arms, though tempered heavenly, for that mortal dint, save he who reigns above, none can resist. She finished, and the subtle fiend his lore soon learned, now milder, and thus answered smooth. Dear daughter, since thou claimst me for thy sire, and my fair son here show'st me, the dear pledge of dalliance had with thee in heaven, and joys then sweet, now sad to mention, through dire change befallen us unforeseen, unthought of. No, I come no enemy, but to set free from out this dark and dismal house of pain both him and thee, and all the heavenly host of spirits that in our just pretenses armed fell with us from on high. From them I go, this uncouth errand soul, and one for all myself expose with lonely steps to tread the unfounded deep, and through the void immense to search with wandering quest a place foretold should be, and, by concurring signs, ere now created vast and round, a place of bliss in the purlieus of heaven, and therein placed a race of upstart creatures to supply perhaps our vacant room, though more removed lest heaven, surcharged with potent multitude, might have to move new broils. Be this, or aught than this more secret now designed, I haste to know, and this once known shall soon return, and bring ye to the place where thou and death shall dwell at ease, and up and down unseen wing silently the buxom air, embalmed with odours. There ye shall be fed and filled immeasurably. All things shall be your prey. He ceased, for both seemed highly pleased, And death grinned horrible, a ghastly smile, To hear his famine should be filled, And blessed his maw destined to that good hour. No less rejoiced his mother bad, And thus bespake her sire, the key of this infernal pit, by due and by command of heaven's all-powerful king I keep, by him forbidden to unlock these adamantine gates. Against all force, death ready stands to interpose his dart, fearless to be o'ermatched by living might. But what owe oh, I to his commands above, who hates me? and hath hither thrust me down into this gloom of Tartarus profound, to sit in hateful office here confined, inhabitant of heaven, and heavenly born, here in perpetual agony and pain, with terrors and with clamours compassed round of mine own brood that on my bowels feed. Thou art my father, thou my author, thou my being gavest me, whom should I obey but thee? Whom follow? Thou wilt bring me soon to that new world of light and bliss, Among the gods who live at ease, Where I shall reign at thy right hand voluptuous, As beseems thy daughter and thy darling, without end. Thus saying, from her side the fatal key, Sad instrument of all our woe, she took and towards the gate rolling her bestial train, forthwith the huge portcullis high up drew, which but herself not all the Stygian powers could once have moved. Then in the keyhole turns the intricate wards, and every bolt and bar of massy iron or solid rock with ease unfastens. On a sudden open fly with impetuous recoil and jarring sound the infernal doors and on their hinges great harsh thunder that the lowest bottom shook of Erebus. She opened, but to shut excelled her power. The gates wide open stood, 
that with extended wings a bannered host under spread ensigns marching might pass through with horse and chariots ranked in loose array so wide they stood and like a furnace mouth cast forth redounding smoke and ruddy flame before their eyes in sudden view appear the secrets of the hoary deep a dark illimitable ocean without bound without dimension where length breadth and height and time and place are lost where eldest night and chaos ancestors of nature hold eternal anarchy amidst the noise of endless wars and by confusion stand for hot cold moist and dry four champions fierce strive here for maestry and to battle bring their embryon atoms they around the flag of each's faction in their several clans light armed or heavy sharp smooth swift or slow swarm populous unnumbered as the sands of barca or cyrene's torrid soil levied to side with warring winds and poised their lighter wings to whom these most adhere he rules a moment chaos umpire sits and by decision more embroils the fray by which he reigns next him high arbiter chance governs all into this wild abyss the womb of nature and perhaps her grave of neither sea nor shore nor air nor fire but all these in the pregnant causes mixed confusedly and which thus must ever fight unless the almighty maker them ordain his dark materials to create more worlds into this wild abyss the wary fiend stood on the brink of hell and looked awhile pondering his voyage for no narrow frith he had to cross nor was his ear less pealed with noises loud and ruinous to compare great things with small than when bellona storms with all her battering engines bent to raise some capital city or less than if this frame of heaven were falling and these elements in mutiny had from her axle torn the steadfast earth at last to sail broad vans he spreads for flight and in the surging smoke uplifted spurns the ground thence many a league as in a cloudy chair ascending rides audacious but that seat soon failing meets a vast vacuity all unawares fluttering his pennons vain plumb down he drops ten thousand fathom deep and to this hour down had been falling had not by ill chance the strong rebuff of some tumultuous cloud instinct with fire and nitre hurried him as many miles aloft that fury stayed quenched in a boggy surtis neither sea nor good dry land nigh foundered on he fares treading the crude consistence half on foot half flying behooves him now both oar and sail as when a griffin through the wilderness with winged course or hill or moory dale pursues the aramaspian who by stealth had from his wakeful custody purloined the guarded gold so eagerly the fiend or bog or steep through straight rough dense or rare with head hands wings or feet pursues his way and swims or sinks or wades or creeps or flies at length a universal hubbub wild of stunning sounds and voices all confused borne through the hollow dark assaults his ear with loudest vehemence thither he plies undaunted to meet there whatever power or spirit of the nethermost abyss might in that noise reside of whom to ask which way the nearest coast of darkness lies bordering on light but straight behold the throne of chaos and his dark pavilion spread wide on the wasteful deep with him enthroned sat sable vested knight eldest of things the consort of his reign and by them stood orcus and aides and the dreaded name of demogorgon rumour next and chance and tumult and confusion all embroiled and discord with a thousand various mouths to whom satan turning boldly thus ye powers 
and spirits of this nethermost abyss, Chaos and ancient night, I come no spy with purpose to explore or to disturb the secrets of your realm, but by constraint wandering this darksome desert, as my way lies through your spacious empire up to light, alone and without guide, half lost, I seek what readiest path leads where your gloomy bounds confine with heaven. Or, if some other place from your dominion one the eternal king possesses lately, thither to arrive I travel this profound. Direct my course. Directed, no mean recompense it brings to your behoof, if I that region lost, all usurpation thence expelled, reduce to her original darkness and your sway, which is my present journey and once more erect the standard there of ancient night. Yours be the advantage all, mine the revenge. Thus Satan, and him thus the anarch old, with faltering speech and visage incomposed, answered, I know thee, stranger, who thou art, that mighty leading angel who of late made head against heaven's king, though overthrown. I saw and heard, for such a numerous host fled not in silence through the frighted deep with ruin upon ruin, rout on rout, confusion worse confounded, and heaven gates poured out by millions of victorious bands pursuing. I upon my frontiers here keep residence, if all I can will serve that little which is left so to defend, encroached on still through our intestine broils, weakening the sceptre of old night. First, hell, your dungeon, stretching far and wide beneath, now lately heaven and earth, another world, hung o'er my realm, linked in a golden chain to that side heaven from whence your legions fell. If that way be your walk you have not far, so much the nearer danger. Go, and speed. Havoc can spoil and ruin on my gain. He ceased, and Satan stayed not to reply, but glad that now his sea should find a shore, with fresh alacrity and force renewed, springs upward like a pyramid of fire into the wild expanse, and through the shock of fighting elements, on all sides round and environed, wins his way. Harder beset and more endangered than when Argo passed through Bosporus, betwixt the justling rocks, or when Ulysses on the larboard shunned Charybdis, and by the other whirlpool steered. So he with difficulty and labour hard moved on. With difficulty and labour he, but he once passed, soon after when man fell. Strange alteration, sin and death amain following his track, such was the will of heaven, paved after him a broad and beaten way over the dark abyss, whose boiling gulf tamely endured a bridge of wondrous length, from hell continued reaching that most orb of this frail world, by which the spirits perverse with easy intercourse pass to and fro to tempt or punish mortals, except whom God and good angels guard by special grace. But now at last the sacred influence of light appears, and from the walls of heaven shoots far into the bosom of dim night a glimmering dawn. Here nature first begins her farthest verge, and chaos to retire as from her outmost works, a broken foe, with tumult less and with less hostile din, that Satan with less toil and now with ease wafts on the calmer wave by dubious light, and like a weather-beaten vessel holds gladly the port, though shrouds and tackle torn. Or in the emptier waste, resembling air, weighs his spread wings, at leisure to behold far off the imperial heaven, extended wide in circuit, undetermined square or round, with opal towers and battlements adorned of living sapphire, once his native seat. And fast by, hanging in a golden chain, this pendant world, 
in bigness as a star of smallest magnitude close by the moon thither full fraught with mischievous revenge accursed and in a cursed hour he hides notes line 282 where was were in 1674 line 402 breath is a misprint for breathe line 483 there is her in 1674 line 527 his is this in 1674 line 542 oelia is oikalia in 1674 line 631 toward is towards in 1674 the end of the second book recording by thomas copeland